Hello, everybody. Uh, today we are going to review solving linear systems by graphing. So remember, a linear system uh, has two or more equations of the form ax plus by equals c and dx plus ey equals f. So remember, this is just standard form for the equation of a line, easy to graph. Okay. A solution of a system of linear equations is the ordered pair x, y that is a solution to both equations at the same time. Okay, so <clears throat> when you have a system of linear equations like this, there's three possible things that can happen. The first one is that the lines can intersect, like they do here at this point, and that means that there is one solution to the problem. Okay? The next thing that can happen is the two lines can be parallel and therefore have no solutions because those lines never intersect each other. The third situation that can occur is that both the lines are actually the same line, and so it has infinite number of solutions. Anything that works for one also works for the other one. Okay? So, uh, check that the point 1, 3 is a solution to the system. Now, they want you to do this graphically here because everything in this lesson is graphic. That would not be my first choice of ways to do things, but we're going to go ahead and do it that way anyway. So this is one where I would put this in slope-intercept form first. So I'm going to take 5x minus 3y equals negative 4, and I'm going to put it into slope-intercept form. And I get that equation right there. Okay, y equals 5 thirds x minus 4 thirds. So <coughs> 4 thirds is going to be right about there. <coughs> Rise 5, run 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3 is going to be right about there. Okay, and we'll go ahead and make a line. Okay, so we'll do something like this. And the thing, you know, about graph <coughs> about graphing is you really got to get the graph to be exact. Okay. So there's my first line. Now the second line, <coughs> uh, x plus 2y is 7. So 2y is negative x plus 7. So y is negative 1 half x plus 7 halves. So <clears throat> that's 3 and a half, 1, 2, 3 and a half. And right there, slope is going to be down 1 to the right 2. Down 1 to the right 2 right there. <coughs> Excuse me. And this line right here. Okay, and they appear to intersect right there. So that appears to be the point 3, 1. Okay, so graphically, that's my solution. Um, now, I would, if I'm doing a, graphic, a graphing one, if I have to do it for some reason, I'm checking my answer to make sure it's right. So... I'm going to go ahead and put 3 in for x in both these equations and 1 in for y and see what happens. So that would be 5 times 3 minus 3 times 1 should equal negative 4. So 15. What just happened? Oh, I'm sorry. I got that backwards. It's not 3, 1. It's 1, one 3. <clears throat> Okay, let's do that again. So, one, three. Okay, so now we get five minus nine is negative four. That's true. This is why you check things. See, I made a mistake and I caught my answer. Okay, now I plug it in here. That's going to be one plus two times three should equal seven. Well, one plus six is seven. That's also true, so... Now I feel good about my answer. Okay? All right, moving right along. 
uh, solve this system by graphing. Okay, so uh, 4x plus 5y is negative 3. Let's go ahead and we'll put that in slope-intercept form. So 5y is going to equal negative 4x minus 3, and y is going to be negative 4 fifths x minus 3 fifths. Okay. And so we'll go ahead and graph that. So it looks like Luna the Math Cat has decided to come by and stop in for a view here. So negative 3 fifths is going to be right about here. And the slope is going to be negative 4 fifths. So it's down for 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right 5. It's going to be right about there. Okay. And we're going to go ahead. Hello, yes. How do you like my line, Luna? Not so much. Huh. Okay. So there's my first line. Now my second line, this is an easy one to just do with a table. Okay. Find the zero. Zero in for x means y is 3. Zero in for y means x is negative 3. So negative 3 zero is right here. And 0, 3 is right here. And I'm going to get a line. This time it's going to be a blue one. Okay, and it's going to go like this. Just like that. And it uh, looks like it's going to intersect right there. That appears to be the point negative 2, 1. So let's check it. So 4 times negative 2 plus 5 times 1 would equal negative 3. So this would be negative 8 plus 5 is negative 3. That's a true statement. And the next one would be negative negative 2 plus 1 should equal 3. And of course negative negative 2 is 2 plus 1 is 3. That is also true. So now I got that one done. Okay, piece of cake. So on a college entrance exam, you answered 80 of 85 questions. Each correct answer adds one point to your raw score. Each unanswered question adds nothing. And each incorrect answer subtracts a quarter of a point. You get a raw score of 70. How many questions did you answer correctly? Okay, so the hardest part of this is setting up your system of equations. Okay, <clears throat> so here's what we know. We know that you answered 80 questions. So the correct questions plus the wrong question, so we'll say incorrect, we'll call it wrong, is going to equal 80, okay? And then we know that the correct questions give you one point, <clears throat> and we subtract a quarter for each one you get wrong, and we get a total score of 70. Okay, there's my system. Now, once I get to here, the rest of this is easy. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to multiply this equation by negative 1 so that I get my c's to cancel out really easy. This becomes 5 fourths w uh, equals 10. And now I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides of this by 4 fifths because that's going to cancel out the 4s and the 5s here. So I get W is 40 over 5, which is 8. So I know that I missed 8 questions. Now I'm going to take this. Uh, I'm going to take this right here. I'm going to take it back up here. I'm going to plug it in right there, because that's an easy question to solve. C plus 8 has to equal 80, which means C has to be 72. So I got 72 correct. And that answers my question right there. Okay? All right. Next question. Another story problem. You purchased a flower shop. The previous owner's records for the past three years show that the average monthly cost was $5,400. The average monthly revenue was $8,600. You paid $156,000 to the shop. If monthly costs and revenues remain the same, how long will it take to break even? Okay, so here's the thing. I've got a cost equation. My cost is going to be 
5400 per month plus I paid $156,000 for this business. Okay? My my revenue is going to be 8600 a month. Okay. Now, the deal is is I want to know when it's going to break even. When is the revenue equal to the cost? Okay. So when is 8,600 M equal to 5,400 M plus 156,000? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 5,400 M from both sides. And I'm going to get... Um, 3,200 M is going to equal $156,000. <clears> okay, I'm going to divide that by 3,200. I need to get out my handy dandy TI 84 plus C Silver Edition graphing calculator or a reasonable facsimile thereof. <clears throat> There we go, and that comes out to 48.75 months. Or almost five years, right? Okay, let's check it with a graph and see how that works out. So, oh, this scale's totally wrong. We're not gonna check it with a graph on this one because that would be really hard to do uh, when we very simply can just solve it like this. Okay. Here we have for you a uh, little assignment. Um, I'm going to let you work on that. I will talk to you guys later. Have a great day.